Hi, I'm Mark Ritterman, one of the developers from unithero.com. Today we're going to talk about a thinking tool that was first published way back in 1881. When John Archibald Venn first published the Venn Diagram, it wasn't called the Venn Diagram but rather the Eulerian Circle. His work in formalising its use in symbolic logic resulted in it being called the Venn Diagram. A Venn Diagram is made up of two circles. Written into each circle are the properties of that object and in the overlapping areas are the similarities between the two. As teachers we may perhaps overlook the opportunities that arise from using this graphic organiser in our classrooms. A graphic organiser like the Venn Diagram provides a template for our thinking. It makes our thinking visible and obvious. Before you can use a graphic organiser like this in your classroom, you need to explain to your students how it works. The best practice is to use a couple of examples like cats and dogs or day and night. Students' responses are going to vary depending on their age and their ability. At a lower level, your students' responses might be a lot more obvious. For example, they might say that dogs eat dog food and cats eat cat food, but they both have four legs. At a high level, your students are going to give you much more abstract ideas. For example, they might say that dogs are man's best friend and cats have nine lives, whereas they both have three letters in their name. The most common misconception about the Venn diagram is that it's a basic tool that sits at the remembering level, but it's an analytical tool that requires prior knowledge about the two objects that you're comparing. Our first suggestion to use a Venn diagram is when you're writing a book review or a more complicated text analysis. Your students can compare two different texts, or within a text they can compare scenes or characters. In maths, you could use a Venn diagram to compare shapes and numbers or the mathematical operations themselves by comparing division and multiplication or subtraction and addition. Another great way of using the Venn diagram in humanities is to compare two great cities like New York and Tokyo. What would your students say are the similarities and what are the differences? When, for example, your students are comparing New York and Tokyo, they need to consider the different kinds of characteristics that cities have. Especially in the humanities, this is formalising thinking of more complicated ideas and offers a great springboard into more complex writing like essays. You can also use a Venn diagram in science to compare compounds and substances. Imagine comparing water and petroleum or hydrogen and helium. If you want to extend your students, you could get them to compare them first as a scientist and then as an environmentalist or a politician and finally as a poet. These different perspectives will show your students that this kind of analysis varies dependent on your perspective. These various perspectives are very much like the six action shoes developed by Edward de Bono and we'll talk about that later in this series. If you've got any other ideas about how to use a Venn diagram, let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next week. Cats have a tail. Hang on a minute, so do dogs. That's a similarity. <laughs>